Hey everyone and welcome to part 7 of this series where we code a fitness tracker using Python. Now the previous episode was all about predictive modeling so we managed to come up with a classification algorithm that was able to score all of the barbell exercises that are present within the data set with an astonishing accuracy of 99%. So really exciting stuff. So that was the machine learning, the classification. But like I've said, we're building a fitness tracker here. And now what I would like to see from a future fitness app that is, for example, connected with a device like an Apple Watch, for example, that is basically tracking everything that you're doing during a workout. And then first of all, has the model implemented that we built in the previous episode so that it's able to classify an exercise for any given exercise that you're doing. It knows, for example, okay, right now you're doing a bench press or you're doing an overhead press or preferably it would of course contain all the various fitness exercises that are out there. That would be perfect, right? But then also not only classifying it because a tracker is not really useful if you can only classify it, but also count repetitions. So that it knows, okay, you're now doing five reps of a bench press and it would sync up to your app. So for example, you track it on your watch and then it is synced to your mobile device where the fitness app the tracker is running on. And then all you have to do basically at the end of every set is input the weight that you used on the bar. And you could even go as far maybe as, for example, preloading it with a uh, training protocol that also that already has the weights included for you. So then basically the app already knows basically what your fitness protocol is. So what exercises you have to do, how many reps, how many sets, and then also the weight. And then you just have to check it to evaluate it. So that would be really cool, right? So I hope that future fitness apps, fitness trackers include such functionality because that would at least for me, make my life a little better when it comes to working out and tracking my workouts because I like to use a data-driven approach uh, when it comes to my workouts. So with that out of the way, let's get into counting repetitions, another key part of a fitness tracker. And now, as always, make sure you have watched all the previous videos so there is a whole playlist Otherwise, this won't really make sense because we will be building upon the code and the data sets that we've created in the previous ones. So go, we will create a Python script that can count repetitions and then also evaluate it against the data set because we know how many repetitions were in the set. So we can evaluate this again and come up with the score again. So what we're going to do, first visualize data to identify patterns. So what kind of patterns can we see spot in the data to count repetitions? Then we're going to configure a low pass filter again and then apply and tweak it, create a function, and then we'll do the benchmark and then we'll evaluate the results. And as always, Python file, the clean one can be downloaded from this document over here. Link will be in the description. So with that introduction out of the way, let's hop into VS Code and start up an interactive Python session. So as always, there are some imports over here and we will be using these matplotlib plot settings to make our graphs a little more fancy. And just to be sure, we are working in the count repetitions.py file, which is in the features folder, which is inside the source folder. And that is important because we will be doing some imports, like for example, the low pass filter. And if we are not working in the features folder, then you will get an error. So make sure that you have the exact same setup. And then we can continue to load the data. And now for this script, we're not going to use the final data set that we use to create our models. So that would be the data features, but we are going a few steps back to data processed because we are now again going to look at the data and see what kind of features are relevant to calculate these reps, so to count these repetitions. And if we start with the features data set, we lose a lot of information because we did some, some cleaning and we did some resampling and we threw away a lot of the data basically to uh, count to these overlaps. So we are going to start with the data process. So let's load that into a pandas data frame. All right, so this should be the data frame with 9,009 rows in it. 
All right, and the next step, since it doesn't really make sense to count repetitions for the resting periods, is we're going to throw that right out of the data set. So let's create a quick filter to do that. Let's quickly check that out. Okay, so about a thousand rows are dropped from the data frame now. So that is all good. So now we should only have rows in here with a label that corresponds to an exercise. And now one more thing that we're going to do here is we're going to quickly calculate the sum of squares again, because there might be useful information in these squares when it comes to counting repetitions. So I'm going to quickly copy and paste a block of code over here because we've already covered that in previous episodes, but we're basically going to calculate the acceleration R and the gyroscope R, which is basically the sum of the squared X, Y and C columns for both the accelerometer and the gyroscope. And we can then take the square root and that should give us the overall new columns. So acceleration R, gyroscope R. So that is the loading and the quick pre-processing of the data. And now the next step to split the data. So since we wanna look at the individual exercises, I'm gonna quickly create five data frames for each of the exercises. So we can study and reference them more easily rather than constantly having to create this filter saying where labels equals etc so this will speed up our coding later down the line so let's start off by defining a data frame for the bench press exercises so we'll do a quick filter where we say label equals bench and then we basically do the same thing for the squat and then also for the row the overhead press and then finally the deadlift all right so we got all of the five exercises let's let's make sure to run everything and store it in memory quickly check it out so we got all of the separate data frames where each data frame should only have label squat in this case over here all right looking good all right so let's now have a look at the data and create some plots to see what kind of elements we can use what kind of patterns we can spot to help us count repetitions. So I'm going to create a couple of plots. So let's quickly create a new variable called plotdf that we can use to loop through all of the subset data frames basically. And then here is a quick little setup, a quick little line of code that we can use to subtract different sets. So I'm basically going to create a filter where we say set equals, and then we look at each of the individual sets that is in here. So this is for example, 64. And then we can also look at one, for example. And here you can see a plot already, but then the next thing we have to do is basically first make sure that we can select it. And then to look at it a little better, let's first look at the X acceleration, for example, and then we say plot. So currently we're looking at the bench press and then let's just duplicate this and then we'll go for all of the individual ones so we can have a clear look so this is the x y z and r all right so let's see what we have over here so we're looking at accelerometer data for the bench press and now we can see from wait if i scroll up that it is that this is a heavy set meaning that it should be five repetitions. So remember, there are heavy sets and medium sets within the data set. So that is the category and heavy five sets, medium 10 sets. So now if we come back to the data over here, we can basically start to have a look at things that make sense to take into consideration. So I can definitely see the patterns over here and I can probably tell from this exact structure over here, that this should be five repetitions. So for example, we go one and then two, three, four, but then not sure if it's four or five. So judging from this view only, I'm not very sure whether there are five or four. So you can see how each of the axes that are in the data give kind of a different view of what we can look at and also maybe how many repetitions we can really count. But let's just copy paste that one more time and then select the acceleration part over here and then hit command D three times and then just swap it into gyroscope. So we can also have a look at what's going on with the gyroscope. And that looks from 
a repetition counting perspective a lot more messy. So it would make sense, at least for the bench press, probably to look at the acceleration, which also from like just common sense makes more sense to look at that instead of the rotation. So probably in here is some useful data that we can use. With that out of the way, let's see what we can do to make this data a little more smooth to filter out most of the noise so we can clearly see the seasonal patterns that are going on. And for this, we're coming back to the low pass filter that we already played around with in the feature engineering part to also get rid of some of that noise that we see in between and that we don't want to introduce over here. And for that, we first have to specify the sampling frequency again. And as usual, we'll set this to five. Remember, there are five instances per second. So that is the sampling frequency that we're using over here. So you can see the interval of 200 milliseconds. Basically, that is what we're doing over here. And then let's calculate the low pass. Make sure to initialize that. So now we have the low pass filter configured. And now it's time to apply and tweak this low pass filter to see what we can do with it. And now again, it's useful to start looking at the plots from a set perspective, so a single set. So let's turn this into like bench DF and then let's change this up a little so we can isolate the different sets. So now for the bench DF as a whole, we take the first set and then basically we define that bench set, all right. So now we should have one set that we can use to start playing around with this low pass filter. And then we're just going to copy and paste that. All right, run all of it, wonderful. All right, so now next to all the split up data frames per label, per exercise, we also have individual sets that we can look at. So bench, quick check over here. Row, that's correct, overhead press, and a deadlift. Beautiful. So now let's see what we can do with the low pass filter when we apply it to these sets. So let's start off with the bench set, for example, and then just let's have a look at the acceleration R score. So the combined sum of squares, and then let's plot this. So let's see what this looks like. All right, so we have a, I guess this is a medium set. Quick check, medium set. No, this is a heavy set. So there should be five reps in here. Okay, so let's now try and play with the low pass filter until we can see something that resembles a pattern of five repetitions. So we can now come back to the low pass class instance that we've defined. So let's take that and then call the low pass filter from it. And then let's quickly check what was it again that we have to put into this. So we have this low pass filter and there is data table, column, sampling, frequency, cutoff frequency, and an order. All right, so we can first come here and say that we are interested in putting in this bench set with the acceleration R. So that will be our data table. And then our sampling frequency would be equal to the sampling frequency we've defined over here. And then we need a cutoff frequency and an order. So let's put that in over here. Let's make sure it's stored correctly. And let's set that to, all right. So that is what we need for now. We input the sampling frequency, cutoff frequency. Let's start off with 0.4 and then we set the order to five. And now if we run this, we will get an error. And that is because oh, it's sampling frequency written like this. So make sure to put all of the parameters in there correctly. And now let's have a look. And now of course ah, we need another one. So it's not the data frame that we put in here, but we have to specify the column over here. And then let's make it a little more specific where we say column equals the acceleration R. And then we put that in here. So it's column. And then we say call equals, all right. That should be it, I guess. All right, there we go. So now, according to this function, we will get a new column in the data frame and that will be the column name and then it will have the underscore low pass behind it. So that's how it works. So you can see over here, it takes the data table and then it adds that additional column. So what we can now do basically is we can take the output that we're getting from here and we'll basically take the column and then we 
basically append the low pass as well and then plot it. So this should provide us with a plot. So now let's have a look. All right. And now we are starting to see some trends, some seasonal patterns over here. So let's see what changes if we, for example, turn up or down this cutoff frequency. So let's see. Okay, this is way too much. There's not much going on anymore. And let's just see what happens if we also put it higher. Okay, so remember we're looking at a heavy bench press set. So we're looking for five repetitions in total. We basically want to create an algorithm that can easily spot these patterns and count them. So we definitely uh, should be somewhere in the middle. Let's also see what happens if we play with the order over here. So this is starting to look a little better. So let's just now put it back to five. Let's see what's going on. It seems like the order doesn't seem to do that much when it comes to this image over here, but it's definitely the cutoff frequency that we need. And this looks pretty nice. Let's see if we can put it down to three. I think for now four should be the good spot. So now, for example, if we look at the minimums or for example, the maximums, we can basically start counting those and could use that as a way to count repetitions. So I can see one, two, three, four, five over here. Or if I do it at the top, one, two, three, four, five. So that is starting to look pretty good. And now let's see if I, for example, swap this to what makes sense. So an acceleration Y would actually make a lot of sense when you do a bench press. So let's see what's going on over here. And we can kind of see a similar pattern. So definitely also five peaks going on over here. So that is pretty nice. So what? remember, so we're basically taking what we're seeing over here, this pattern, let me see, X, Y, X, Y, yes. So we're basically taking this messy pattern and by applying the low pass filter, we cut out all of that noise and convert it into something that we can use to count. So this is going into the right direction. So let's put it back to acceleration R because that one seems just a little nicer. So that will do. And now to quickly check the other data frames that we're dealing with, we can simply swap out the set over here. So now it's a squat that we're looking at. And we can also see some nice patterns going on over here. Let's have a look at the row. This seems a little messy. Overhead press, this also looks very clean. And what about the deadlift? That also looks pretty neat. So it seems that for the row, we have to potentially find another column. So that is something we have to figure out later, I guess. But first let's try and set something up that we can use to start counting these peaks and valleys. And I found a very useful function for this that we can use, and that is from the scipy.signal library. And that is the weird looking name over here. So that is the function, but it is used to calculate the relative extrema of data. So it takes in an array, and then we can also specify a function that we can use to basically explain what we wanna look for. So basically, do we wanna look for minimum values or do we want to look for maximum values? So that is how this function works. And then what it returns is basically a list of indices of the maxima in arrays of integers. So we will get index values back. So let's see what we can do if we start to play around with it. So let's take this one over here and let's have a quick look. So we need, first of all, a data set. So we can take basically that same for example, bench press set that we were dealing with. And now we do need to specify the column. So this is the pandas series. And then let's convert that into the values. So it will be a NumPy array. So this is what we can put in here. And then second would be the comparator that we're going to use. And for that, let's use MP greater to look for maximum values. So now let's see if I run this. So as you can see, we are now getting back an array of indexes basically. But this is, of course, from the original set. So the original data frame that was not processed using the low pass filter. So we're getting quite some values back. And then we could reference these indexes with the indexes over here. So basically where they are at in the data frame. And then we could map them accordingly. But now, of course, we first want to take our low pass filter function 
and then say over here that we want a story. So let's just say this is data and then come over here. And then basically we have to do the same thing. So let's define it one more time, specify the column. And then in here, we only have to put in like data dot values. And then also make sure of course that we are referencing the correct column. And then also of course we need the low pass column again. So we're basically doing what we were copying over here. So first let's store this one more time and then we can store that data variable in here. And that gives us the bench press set with now the acceleration Y. Let me quickly change that to acceleration R. Run that one more time. And now we should have the acceleration R low pass in here in the data variable. What we can now do, so we reference the data, then refer back to the column and then the low pass filter. And then let's have a look at the values. All right, so this is basically what we were doing previously, but now turning it into a NumPy array and using it in a setup where we can put it into a function. And now let's see what we get if we run this. And wow, look, now we have five values and this was a heavy set. So this is starting to look good, but now let's make this a bit more visual so we can actually see what's going on. And for that, we first basically have to identify the peaks. So these values that you're seeing over here are the indexes. And now if we want to define the peaks over here, then first we have to store the output from the extrema function into a new variable. So let's do that. Indexes are in here. And then we can use the ilog method on our data frame to identify where the peaks are. And now we can see that we have a subset of the data frame with just these indexes. All right, so this is starting to look really good. And before we create some code that can plot all of this, let's first put it in a quick function so we can build it dynamically from the start basically. So we are going to create a function called count reps and in there we are going to put the following parameters so we'll use a data set the cutoff the order and then a column which will default to the acceleration r column and then let's clean this up so we don't need that anymore and then the data set is what goes in here we have the column and then we have the order in here and we also have the cutoff that we can use. So now we have all the parameters nicely in here. And then we can also return the length of the peaks. So now let's see what we can do over here. And let's see what happens if we count reps and then for example, put in the squat set that we've defined. So this should work now. So we have the squat set and we have the function that is defined in here. And voila, we can now calculate the total amount of reps. So this is getting pretty exciting, but let's make things a little more visual, like I've said, because now it's doing it all behind the scenes and we wanna see what's going on. All right, so I'm now going to copy and paste a quick block of code in here because this is not an episode about data visualization and building this up from scratch takes a lot of time usually, but I'll briefly explain what's going on. So like I've said, we first use the low pass filter. We've validated that over here that we can use that to smooth it. Then we come up with the indices and then we basically can get the peaks by creating a subset using iLog. So we will first just plot the filtered column of the data frame and then we'll create another plot using the peaks and we'll mark that with an O. So let me show you what's going on if I run this. So here we can see what we've just created. And now let me actually get back to the original bench press because that is what we were validating. And that is where we were seeing the correct rep counts of five reps. So now we can actually start to paint a picture of what's going on over here. So we really smooth out the data and then use the extrema function with the MP grader to calculate the maximum values. And now what we can do over here is we can start to play around with the cutoff frequency like we were doing before, but now can have a look at what uh, the effect is directly on the calculation of the peaks. So we can clearly see that if we increase the cutoff, that it will result in a less accurate result. And like we've seen before, the 0.4 is for this set at least like spot on. We have 
the five peaks, five repetitions. And then the nice thing about this little block of code over here is that it also looks at what is the label, what is the category, and then it plots the reps in here. So this is a heavy bench press set, so it should be five reps, and then it says, this is five reps in this case. So this is some nice stuff to play around with. So let's see what it can do for the other sets. So again, so we already looked at the squat, so it seemed a bit off over there. So this results in six, but it says that it's a medium set. So this should actually be 10. So this is quite interesting to see what's, what's going on over here. Let's have a look at the row. And again, we might have to tweak the parameters later down the line. So this is a medium row with six reps. So this should also be 10. So not quite accurate. Let's look at the overhead press. And here we have six instead of five because it's a heavy one. And we have 10 reps. Oh, that's actually beautiful. So here we have a medium set, 10 reps. So it is really great. Although you could see this is pretty, there's some pretty weird stuff going on over here, but hey, <laughs> it still counts 10 repetitions. So this might have been like a rep that was a little off or something like that. All right. So pretty good starting point to start optimizing the parameters, I would say. All right. So I did some testing and some tweaking, and this is basically what I came up with for the initial sets. So again, for the bench press, we were already spot on. And then for the squat, I lowered it just a little bit to basically make it work. But as you can see, we have some weird things going on over here, but I was basically just trying to reverse engineer the parameters in such a way until the total uh, repetitions till the total count was accurate, at least for the first set that we have initiated right now or selected. So that is basically my approach right now, just playing around, testing, and then see if it can translate, if it will generalize to all the other sets. So for the row, I had some trouble finding a setup, a combination of parameters that was accurate, but I eventually switched to the gyroscope and I found that if I use the X uh, gyroscope column, with a cutoff of 0.65, then we have 10 reps over here on a medium row. And then the overhead press, we have five clean rows over here. So lowering the cutoff just a tad bit compared to the bench press. And then for the uh, deadlift, I think that one was already spot on. This is just the initial setup that works for the first set. So now let's create a benchmark data frame and basically see what happens if we apply all of these settings for each of these exercises, but then for all of the sets, and then let's see if we compare that to the benchmark. So if we come back to the original data frame with all of our data minus the rest, I'm basically going to add another column, which we call reps. And in order to specify this column, we are going to use the category column over here that has heavy and medium and we go are going to apply a lambda function and we are going to say uh, lambda x equals and then we'll say five if x equals heavy else 10. So this is a quick little lambda function that can help us and let me just see what it looks like so it seems to work medium 10, heavy, five. So we basically take the category column and then using the apply, we loop over it, so to say. And then we take the X, which is just the value for every row. And then we say, hey, if it's heavy, then put in a five. And if it's not heavy, so everything else, so just a medium in this case, that's the only other alternative, it will put in a 10. All right, so now we have a data frame which still has all the rows in it, but now we want to basically consolidate this, basically turn this into a group data frame where we group based on the set. So let's try and do that. So we'll specify rep df, and that is going to be the df, and then we're going to group by a lot of things. So we're going to group by label, category, and set, and then we want to take the reps column and then we also have to specify an aggregation function and we'll use the max for that and then also we'll reset the index so what's going on over here this is the final result so we're basically doing a group by and we do that based on the label the category and the set so the goal is of course to group by set and this might be a bit redundant but now we really make sure okay we want a label, a category, and a set, which are all unique. And then we want to look at 
the reps and then we take the max just as a way of picking one of the values over here so it doesn't really matter because if we use the minimum value it will probably be the same result because everything should be mapped correctly but the group by needs an aggregation function so we'll just use max and then we'll reset the index again to make it nice and tidy so that will result us in the data set over here which has all the unique sets so we have the set number label category and the amount of reps in here so that is pretty neat so we can use this as our benchmark basically so this is what we consider to be the ground truth assuming that there are no mistakes in the data and all of the participants accurately performed five reps on the heavy set 10 reps on the medium set and now let's add another column to this so we basically have the reps but we also want a reps predicted basically and for now let's set that equal to zero so let's have a look one more time so now all we have to do is basically loop over everything in here do our calculations and then add it to this data frame and then we can come up with some kind of a score. So now let's create a loop to loop over the data frame and do just that. So I'm going to loop over the set.unique list and then we'll use s to reference that. And then we are going to create a subset which we will set equal to a filter based on where the set is equal to s. So this will loop over the data frame, create all the selections we need. And then I'm going to basically take the settings that we have defined over here and then put them in place here using various if statements. So we're going to start off with just the column equals start off with the standard one, which is the acceleration R, which seems to work for most of the cases. And then also let's specify a cutoff of 0.4 because that's what's working for the bench press. And then let's now put in all the alternatives. All right, so I've added three simple if statements in here, basically saying, hey, if we're looking at a squat, you put in this. If we're looking at a row, we'll change up the parameters to this. And then for the overhead press, again, lower it to 35. And then for the deadlift, the same settings that were working for the bench press were working there as well. So this should work for now. So now that we have defined the parameters, we can count the repetitions. So let's define a variable reps. And then let's just put in our function that we have created that will plot the visual basically, and then also return the peaks. So we put in our subset. So that is, let me just check, that is our data set. And then we do the cutoff and we do the column. And we can also specify the order over here, but we didn't really change that, right? So we will leave that as is, and this will be our function to count the repetitions. All right, and then the final thing that is left to do is now add the reps that we just calculated to our benchmark DF based on the kind of set that we are working with. So based on the S that we are looping over. So we are coming back to basically rep DF, and then we're going to take the location where rep df dot set and then by using this notation over here where we first specify the column and then we set a value we put it in and i just noticed that i have a mistake over here so it's not press this should be reps and that is because is a mistake over here so that is github copilot that is picking that up so basically what we're doing over here we take the benchmark data frame so we make a selection with the log function and say hey all rows where set is equal to s we take the reps predicted column and we set it equal to reps and now since this is a unique data frame based on the unique sets already you can tell it will update only for one row at a time basically looping over all of the 85 unique sets and then updating them all right so let's see what we get if we run this so as expected, this will loop through all the original sets and then start to creating the plots, showing all the nice peaks. And then in the back end behind the scenes, it is also adding all of the calculations to the data frame. So it seems that it was running just fine. So let's have a look at what we now have. So we can come to rep df and we can see what's going on over here all right so you can see how the press spread so the mistake was still in there so let me just quickly get rid of that so that is press delete that and then come again rep df so now we can see for each row over here we have an actual so a ground truth of the repetitions and we have a prediction and we can see for some cases 
that it is correct. And here it's off by one, for example, off by one again, off by two, here off by five. So this one's pretty weird. But now if we zoom out, we can similar to like we would do in machine learning, for example, with a regression problem, we can use an error metric to basically calculate the differences between the actual repetitions and the predicted ones. And for this, it makes the most sense to use the mean absolute error. So we can directly compare the error score and see how many reps it was off on average. So let's start by defining an error and we'll use the mean absolute error and we'll put in the reps, any reps predicted. And then also let's round this to two and then let's check out what we got over here. All right, so we have an overall error of one, which is actually not that bad considering that that is just on average one repetition off out of all of these 85 sets. All right, so that is pretty good. So now let's actually create a quick plot to also see where we go wrong and get a bit more of an overview, a bit more, a bit better understanding of where this error came from. So I'm going to create a simple bar plot that I'm basically going to do by grouping the data again, and this time by label and by category. And then we'll just plot the reps and the reps predicted take the mean and then create a bar plot. So let's see what we have over here. Let me actually make that a little bit bigger for you so we can see what's going on. So this is very interesting. So let's see what's going on. So we have for all of the exercises and also all of the categories, so medium heavy, a visualization basically where blue is the actual reps and red is the predicted. So here you can see that on average for heavy bench press, it was just slightly below five. And here we can really start to look at, for example, deadlift heavy, it was spot on. And here's so squat heavy, it was also spot on. And here we can see, for example, squat medium, it seems to have a pretty big error over here. That is also the one we were seeing where at one point it was uh, saying that it was five reps where it should be 10. But overall, this gives us a pretty nice overview of how our current setup is performing. All right, so overall, pretty good score. Mean absolute error of one overall, so one rep off. And now we have taken quite a general approach, I would say, where we basically try to optimize the overall error metric. But if you want to get really specific in this, you should really isolate each of the individual exercises and then probably create a specific model just for that and tweak those parameters even further. Maybe also start to tweak with the order as well that is in here, potentially some other parameters that we can tweak. But as a starting point, I think this is pretty solid. And now you can really start to play around with it. So let me know down in the comments if you can find a better combination of parameters resulting in a lower error score. So eventually, the best model, the best setup would be where all the red bars that you are seeing over here would be equal to the blue bars. So that would be an error score of zero. So then we have a perfect model for this data set for counting repetitions. If you find a better setup, let me know. And there are probably many other functions as well that you can leverage for this. So now we're using the extrema function from the scipy.signal library, but there might be better functions out there that you can use. All right, and that brings us to the end of this episode. And at least for now, also to the end of this series, because Counting Repetitions Part 7 was the last one, at least for now, like I've said. And now if you've been following along from the start, so if you've watched all the videos, I really wanna thank you for your time and your attention. We have really covered a lot. I hope that you learned a lot and I really want to do more series like this, maybe even extend this one because I feel like there is a lot of shallow advice on the internet, a lot of shallow videos when it comes to machine learning and data science that teach you concepts very isolated, meaning there are videos on really specific topics that are useful when you are looking for just that but not from like a general, more holistic approach when it comes to tackling projects. So I hope that by walking you through an entire project, you really start to understand like classes, functions, processing, all the steps, the intermediate data sets that we have gathered, basically bringing everything together because this is how you work 
in the real world. This is really the stuff that I apply and use for my clients. And now, as you might know, I work as a freelance data scientist and what I've demonstrated in this series is literally also the way that I work for my clients to help them solve their problems. So I hope that it's been helpful. I hope that you learned a ton. And now the next step, of course, is to apply everything that you've learned to your next project whether that is a university project or a professional project for if you are already working, that is like the next step. And now if you're a data professional with already some work experience and want to apply this to freelancing projects as well to maybe earn more money or work on more exciting projects or to create more freedom, but don't really know where to start, then you should really check out my data freelancer program, which is a mastermind that is specifically designed to help data professionals make the transition from data employee to full-time data freelancer. And by joining, you'll become part of a community where you will be coached for one year by me and work together with other data professionals that are working on their freelancing career. And we will teach you everything you need to know about starting a business and proven methods to never run out of projects. And the group, the community will also act as your private data council to answer all project related questions. And basically the whole program is designed with the following goals in mind. So we want to make more money, we want to work on fun projects and we want to create freedom. So that is what we're trying to achieve here. So there is a six week training program with course content that you can go through on your own. And there are weekly collaboration calls where we dive into all things freelancing and any questions you might have. So yeah, it really is a community where we come together. It basically feels like hanging out with your friends, but with real business results. So that is the Data Freelancer Mastermind. So if you're a data professional who already has some experience and you consider freelancing, but don't really know where to start, then check out the link in the description and you can sign up for the waitlist over here. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks again for watching and then I'll see you in the next one.